Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at an Italian bayonet. Now, this one here is a model of 1870-16, uh, made to fit the Austrian Mannlicher M95. Uh, you may disagree with me based on that, but um, that's what this one is. There are a number of bayonets that look almost identical to this, that fit a number of different rifles, and we'll get into that very shortly. The reason I have an Italian flag is because this was originally an Italian bayonet which was captured and converted. So, initially this bayonet was a long sabre bayonet used by Italy on their Vedeli rifles and was made to fit the model of 1870 Vedeli, the model of 1870-87 Vedeli Vitali. Then later, the 6.5mm model of 1870-87-16 Vedeli Cacano during the First World War. And uh, also the Austrian Mannlicher M95, both in Italian service and in Austrian service. They were manufactured at the arms factory in Turin, which is um, spelt this way in Italian. You know what, I'll go through each rifle in a chronological order, because it took me a very long time to get my head around this, but I'll try to explain it as best I can. So initially, we have the model of 1870 Betterly rifle. It's a 10.4 millimeter black powder rifle. Uh, this took a long saber bayonet, which was this one here. This one's been shortened with a much longer blade and a hook quillen. This first Betterly rifle, the bayonets have a long leaf spring going the full length of the handle. And the muzzle ring has a notch in the base. So that's what our model of 1870 looks like. Then in 1887, there was an update to both rifle and bayonet. Now the, the updates to the bayonet include a leaf spring that was shortened to only about halfway down the handle and the notch in the base of the muzzle ring was deleted. So those are our two distinct types of Vettely bayonets. The model of 1870 Vettely and the model of 1870-87 Vettely Vitali. Both of these bayonets were modified during the First World War to fit three different rifles. So first, uh, they were modified, well, they were just shortened into this configuration here, had the blades substantially cut down and the hook quillens removed to fit the Vettely Kakano, which was the same Vettely rifle, either the 1870 or the 1870-87, Rechambered to take the 6.5 millimeter smokeless powder Kakano cartridge. That's what you usually come across when you see these, and they're often referred to as model of 1870/87/16. Not always correct because often they're just 1870s/16s, but generally people refer to them as the whole lot. Uh, I should also probably point out that you'll see these referred to by many collectors as the model of 1871. Uh, or the model of 1871 slash 15. I don't know if that's correct, but I'm 90% certain it's 1870 and 16, because that's what most of the reputable sources have um, told me. Now, finally, the other modification to these, uh, they're found in this configuration, sometimes with a smaller muzzle ring. The size of the muzzle ring is the same size as that of an M95 because they were either captured by the Austrians or used by the Czech Free Legion in Italian service who also used the M95. Now, I've been told, I haven't checked myself, that this bayonet will fit the M95 even without the muzzle ring modification. Uh, however, it'll be a loose fit and it won't be as secure. But many of them were modified to have a smaller muzzle ring or even an insert to um, decrease the diameter of the muzzle ring. This one here we know was uh, captured by Austria because it comes with an Austrian scabbard. So initially they would have come with an Italian scabbard which is made of leather with a brass locket and a brass tape. These uh, Italian scabbards aren't the best and it's quite difficult to find one nowadays in good condition because the tape, the end, end mount, will quite often wiggle off and come off, and the locket as well. The leather is not great. The stitching's fine, but just the connections to the locket and tape aren't great. And um, a number of these Austrian captured ones 
come with these Austrian bayonets. And we know it's Austrian because it comes with this Austrian frog stud and the remains of a Austrian eagle just there. You know what, I'll go through the entire construction. So, the blade initially was very long, it's been shortened down to this length here, which I believe is, oh, I can't remember, 10 inches or something, whatever I've said below. Uh, it's been um, ground down into a spear point. Uh, the spine remains the same, big round fullers, and the blade actually holds an edge pretty well. It's still sharp, and it doesn't appear to have been sharpened recently. The cross guard has had the hook quillen removed. Uh, the hook quillen itself initially was quite long and very distinctive. Then we have our 10.4 millimeter uh, muzzle ring. It's probably more than 10.4. 10.4 was the caliber of the rifle with our notch down the base. Now the grips are retained by two screws and they're actually made of a composite material. And um, I know here they look a bit blue. That's a reflection from the sky but they're actually sort of a really chocolatey, rich brown. On the reverse, we have our long leaf spring retained by a screw, and that one screw retains the grips here, and that second screw terminates uh, just on the other side of the tang and doesn't go through the grip. I've seen a photo of one that's disassembled, but um, I don't want to pull this one apart because I'm not game, I'll be able to get it back together. Then we just have a pommel with a push button and you'll see when I press it, the leaf spring still works just fine, still nice and strong. Got a nice sharp edged mortise and you'll see our notch just there by my thumb is ramped so the bayonet will slide onto the rifle without, you, without the user having to depress the button. And as it slides on the rifle, the bayonet lug will push on that ramp pushing the button across until it passes the catch and it will snap into place. Finally, we have this little, I don't know what you call that, notch at the end of the pommel. I don't know what the purpose of that is. I can only summarize or, um, not summarize, sorry, I can only guess that it fits under the rifle somewhere. Now, I've already described what the scabbard should look like. Instead, we have this Austrian scabbard. I have a very substantial bayonet collection. I've got access to a lot of bayonets and this scabbard will only fit this bayonet. It will not fit the M95, which I have just here. It's not even close to a fit, doesn't go in the whole way. Ugh. And the blade itself is just comically small, does not fit. Um, so from what I can tell, this scabbard will only fit this bayonet. It was purpose built for the captured Vetterli bayonets in Austrian service when their scabbards were no longer serviceable. So we know that this one here is Austrian, despite the fact it does not have the muzzle ring conversion. But from what I've read, they don't all have that. As you can see, the blade will only go in the scabbard one way. Got our um, little flat piece there to accommodate the spine. And it's uh, just a standard steel scabbard for now with no drench holes down the bottom. Finally we'll jump into the markings associated with this bayonet. So first off we will have our Italian serial numbers across the cross guard. Uh, cross guard. It's unclear if this is the original Vetterli serial number or this is an updated uh, Vetterli Cacano serial number or this is an Austrian serial number. I don't know. And I don't know if you can use the serial numbers to date the rifles and bayonets. Um, I haven't found any resources that allow me to do that. Second, we have our manufacturer mark, which is always going to be just here, which is going to say Torino in an oval. Uh, then we have a proof mark, which is just above our button here. I'll put a photo up so you can see that. And finally, this one here has a unique marking that I have not seen on any others. And I'm guessing it's a unit mark just based on how it's configured. And it's found here on the base of the cross guard. And what we've got is two numbers, 11 and 52, with an I underneath it. So I'm guessing the I is for infantry, possibly 11th regiment and maybe 5th company 2nd rifle or something like that. I don't know. But that... Generally how you'll see a unit marking with a couple of numbers and a letter prefix for a um, type of unit. I 
I've had a pretty deep dive into Austro-Hungarian unit markings and Italian unit markings and I can't find anything that really matches it. So it's a little bit of a mystery to me. Um, if you know, comment below. I would absolutely love to find out. It's very, very cool. I should probably also point out that these were used in Italian service with the M95 as well. So the Italians were uh, fighting against the Austro-Hungarian Empire and uh, they captured a number of Mannlicher M95 rifles. And they put them in service with the uh, Czech Free Legion, who were a, um, a group of uh, Czechs and Slavs who were uh, fighting against the Austro-Hungarian Empire on behalf of you know, Italy, France, and Russia. So they used these rifles and these bayonets as well, but um, I don't believe they used this one here. As I said, I believe this one is Austrian. Anyway, guys, this was quite a difficult video to research. It was very challenging to find a lot of information on these. Generally, the only information you find are on the Italian ones, not the Austrian ones, and then the Vitaly rifles themselves. There's not a lot, a lot of great resources out there to really, you know, good, a lot of good reference material. Um, I've heard there's a couple of great books in Italian, but I don't have access to those books and I don't speak Italian. Uh, and I haven't been able to find anyone who's really got great knowledge on these either. So I've done the best I can. Um, if I've made any mistakes or left out anything critical or anything interesting, feel free to comment below so we can all read. If you haven't already, guys, and you've made it this far, please feel free to subscribe because you wouldn't want to miss any of my future videos. And um, thanks for watching.